secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 491. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, as football season has returned, and we are all about the fun of fall. So with that, we turn to Charlie Carden, my co-host. The, f- the fun of fall, 88 degrees here in West Michigan. Yes. It's ridiculous. It's 85 here. My yes. goodness. Uh, I, I don't know what you would call the later summer. I know that it had an expression it was used in the past, which I'm not comfortable saying. Um, we'll just call Indian it late summer. summer. That's, in summers, that's what I'm talking. It's, 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 it's a term that is not without like re- revolution or, or I don't know. What's that's what I was curious point? about. I've I've certainly ended up on the wrong side of not understanding that kind of thing. So anyway, I will look th- it up th- to see if it's if it's uh, that, horrible. It, is there a website that just has, hey, this is racist now. You can't say this thing. I is it racist.com? Yes. Let's go to see that. OK, OK. Uh, Native American summer. How about that, Charlie? Why not indigenous appropriate. people? Indigenous but as long as we're know. asking the question, that makes us better than those who don't. Then not asking the question or acting like, well, why is it that way? Yes, that's the definition yes. of, of... As long as we not, know the right not, thing. Not evolving. The right not evolving. But anyway, yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, we got a fun show. Uh, we're going to talk about all the other great stuff that we usually love to talk about. And then we're going to preview media as we get into the fall because fall actually begins is it next week the 20th or is it oh no that's this week it's the 15th as we're recording this of september so just five days from now five or seven Correct. days I can never, never keep it straight if it's the 20th or the 22nd but regardless uh we're about to launch into the fall which is fun you know spooky season we've uh on the movie front we've already gotten into watching some spooky movies because we have a long list so we thought why not kind of sure. stretch it out so we watched you'll love this todd we watched uh, because they're all like a minute, an hour and twenty minutes each. We watched all five of the Final Destination movies in the last. Oh few days. my! Oh my God! There uh, and now you're going to be paranoid you, of how you may die, Charlie, every day. I mean, I've seen the. I thought I had seen them all. The second to last one, I had almost no recollection about. But the movies are all the same. Uh, and if you if you haven't seen them, hit me up on social. Is Tony Todd in all of them, or was he, he just in one of them? That's just the thing. He was not. He was not in the fourth one, which is the one that oh. I thought was the worst. Because uh, there are five, yeah. And, and the, the but he came back for the fifth. Around. He did, but I. You know, oh. But again. That's that's a subject for another time. Um, uh, and I'm, but yes, I would say I, you know, I, I have them on Fandango, but I think they're on Max. Um, but they're dumb. It's, it's a movie that follows the same exact format for five films. But people loved them. People absolutely loved them. They they were on from the year. Yeah. The first one was the year two thousand. Last one was twenty eleven. People loved them. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're into that season, uh, and we're into uh, our awesome Secret Friends Unite Patreon. Super Squad, if you visit patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, you have the opportunity uh, to listen to uh, early shows like my program, Code 47, which is all about Star Trek, which I drop a couple of days early on our Patreon. Uh, You have ad-free versions of the rest of our shows. Uh, Special content, including for our awesome patrons coming up this week, our Patreon-exclusive party chat we got uh, we get online for an hour or so play some games this is our second uh program we're excited to have uh people join us for that so if you are a patreon you should be tuning in and all that information is on our discord so that is of course the very best way to stay in touch with us and interact talk about geek stuff todd's got a new program todd i I couldn't even do it justice what do you got going on oh yes yes uh i am a sporto uh but i'm a novice most of the time i just enjoy it but i'm not well-rounded so um, I, I am in a fantasy football league. So is Sean Nias. We thought, Hey, we talk about this stuff anyways, talk about picks. What should we do? So Sean and I are doing a fantasy football show called waiver wire wizards. Episodes one is out now for Patreons. Ooh. And this is going to come out every, probably every Wednesday morning will is when it will be released the just wizards. in time for, of Waverly Place. I love it. Good, good. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So we're going to do our best to talk about how our teams are doing and help you do better. Sean is the expert. I am the simpleton. So it's going to be a good time. So look for that every is, Wednesday morning so you can your, make your picks. Your reigning club champion. Like, have you guys been in the league together forever? And like, he's the guy. Is that, is well, that what it is? 
the funny part is Sean is in a league with his family. I am in a league with coworkers. So mm-hmm. it's a mixed bag where we're really not competing yeah, against each other. We're, we're, we're complimentary. We're helping each other. We discuss. So, um, but I was added to a fantasy football league by our own Schloss Ritter in the group. So he joined, he had me join a league. I know nothing about the league and it was auto picked. So good times. So if you like fantasy football, you want to check it out. It's now in our Patreon. Uh, I'll probably put it out for everyone. Uh, the Friday, Eh, maybe the Thursday before. So patrons would get go. it the day before and then maybe on Thursday before the Thursday night game. Right. So enjoy. So yes, the bottom line is, is that you're going to get all the best content free when you join the Patreon, which again, you can do. I don't think I mentioned this for seven days for free. When you join up, you get to check out everything we've got. Uh, and we'd love to give some uh, love and respect to our top folks on our besties level. Uh, Chris one H one D great guy. My friend, Derek, AKA the figure dude, Francie, my wife's awesome hairdresser, uh, the Mr. Xbox Expansion Pass, friend of the show, Luke Lore, and uh, my awesome uncle, Tim Horan, great guy, uh, the only person in my family who subscribes to the podcast, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, and our friends with benefits level, John Sedorf, the awesome Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, that's friend of the show and frequent collaborator, Kelly, and her business partner, Crayley, Brendan Myers. Corey in HD, and our friend Matthew Keel. And last but not least, second mention of the show, the awesome, nice family out there in the Twin Cities, Sean, Stella, and Henry. We are very grateful uh, for everything that you do for us. So thank you. And uh, again, patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, seven days for free. And as Arnie says, in Predator, stick around. What is going on? With this vintage, it looks like I just watched the special on YouTube before I came down here about the St. Louis Arch, and it makes an appearance in this comic cover. What's going on here? Oh, my goodness. We've got Marvel Comics Mystery number 91. Uh, This came out April 1949. So if you think about this, this is well before the Marvel comic characters you know of. And we've got the Human Torch, who was, I believe, actually an android, not a human. Correct. Jim something? Jim, Jim, Ham- Thorpe? Jim Hammond. And Jim, not he, Jim Thorpe, the he athlete. made a return uh, in the 1980s under the auspices of writer and uh, artist John Byrne. In the West Coast Avengers, he was resurrected after having his backstory retconned because in the old days, he was retconned to his android body was modified by Ultron to become the Vision. And ah. Byrne, Byrne retconned that by saying it was a trick from Immortus in the future, Immortus being Kang. Uh, no. So anyway, if you read uh, the arc in the Avengers West Coast, which is available on Marvel Unlimited, uh, in the it's in the 40, the, the, the number, numbered issues in the 40s and 50s, you'll get that full story. That was a cool squad at that time. I, I loved having him as part of that team. That was pretty neat. But anyway. Very good. Well, for this comic that's 10 cents, uh, we've got a cover of a weird plane that is also a helicopter. We've got this guy, and it says, Come any closer, Torch, and I'll shut off the electromagnet. It looks as though Dizzy Days wins at last. Glad that he's using his name in the first person. And we've got this woman uh, who's falling. There's a magnet picking her up, which is not the St. Louis Arch, Charlie. Sorry. Uh, and then it says, I mean, another, it's, basic shape. <laughs> it's, it's a magnet. Uh, another astonishing tale wherein Dizzy Days, the genius of Goofy, goofy gimmicks traps human torch. And Charlie, this is kind of one of those things back in the day. If you think about things that you liked about like cartoons and comics, when you had a magnet, of course, it was like a horseshoe that right. just everything would work. You had a piece of ham on the ground that looked like a big, the most delicious piece of ham you've ever had. Oh, you and it would just grab you. So yeah. here we go. But Dizzy Days proclaiming himself the winner. Um, I love and- it. I mean, he's a little ridiculous looking. He appears to be wearing like one of those old timey safari hats. A pit hat, lo- right? A pit yeah. hat? Is that what is, it's called? Is that, is, I have no idea. And he sure. looks like Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine, but maybe he's on he's on heroin because he's just and his he, smile is too big. It's just it's, like it's it. a little off putting. But I like it. He's the genius of goofy gimmicks. So I'm like, that, that, I mean, the, that sounds like it belongs on the old, you know, Batman show. You know, that should be the egghead or what is it? What I'm sorry, uh, Dizzy Days. 
that should be right up there with Egghead, like and the King Toy Time. Man or, or yeah. Toy Master. Yeah, yeah, any of those things. So yeah, Toy so um, nice. this is what you got back in the day, kids. So this is what entertainment was. But of course, yeah. I mean, what else and, did kids have to do? They had to like what shovel uh, right. mines and eat oval or drink Ovaltine. Was uh, it? In April of 1949, for ten cents, it was probably 200 pages uh, in quarterly. So it come out a and there was 85 here. characters within. Yes, right, exactly. Yeah, that's probably what's on the back cover. But anyway, yeah, great trip down memory lane 1949 that's when my that's when my dad was born uh in september of that year so but uh someone who was uh uh inching ever closer to retirement age at that time was our own madam webb uh, who was of course born in the year 1900 so she was 49 and a half at this point uh oh work, yeah. she was on her 80 she was on her third husband <laughs> yeah thir- third husband of third husband it was yeah once yes. removed um why while, while her uh, other activities at that time are perhaps unknown to us these days we do find her down at the corner of hollywood and vine giving us all of the latest scoops in the world of entertainment let's get on down there and check in find out what's going on let's go now it's time for madam webb's rumors and news take it away boys Thank you, Madam Webb. Well, Madam Webb, we talked about your husband's and Dizzy Days. Actually, we found out was your first husband. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! He's at, he's at the he's at the bottom of a mine shaft, isn't he? Poor. Uh, guy. You know, she was she was always supporting him him in his uh, goofy gimmicks, and apparently they yeah. weren't enough to put food on the table. So yeah, he went, right. Turned to a life of crime, Charlie. So uh, you, you sorry, know, Madam you, Webb. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? Big insurance policy. She oh, loves her bad boys. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, I'll let you take this one away. We have a the sad passing uh, of an icon of the uh, late 90s and early 2000s uh, art world uh, in the comics. bit. So tell, tell me about John Cassidy's passing. So John Cassidy uh, was a an iconic artist artist of like the late 90s. That's when he really came into uh, really uh, tremendous success. Um, Some of the books that you may have heard of, uh, he did Planetary, which is uh, going to be a big DC book. It was a Wildstorm book that was really unique, different. He did that with Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. Um, He did the covers for that comic. Um, He did Captain America with uh, John Ney Ryber back in the day when it was Marvel Knights. That was a big thing for Cap. It was really bringing Cap to, uh, back to, uh, I I guess, to more a respected character versus what he kind of become as like Cap Wolf and all those wacky things wearing weird Cap armor in the late 90s. With Cap, yeah, the Mark Gruenwald era started in the 80s was really strong. He passed away in the late 90s, and then it kind of turned into what you're describing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah before yeah. Hero, Hero it was Onslaught when the characters all got pulled out. Yeah, some rough yeah, stuff. Exactly, yeah. And then um, he really found success as an X-Men uh illustrator oh, yeah. with uh josh whedon josh whedon that 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 book obviously josh whedon josh how we feel whedon, about him when he was in his heyday when the yes, name yes. Could, the name could be spoken it's funny mm-hmm. watching old episodes of uh big bang theory and his name will come up from time to time like elon musk had a guest starring role in an episode mm-hmm. of that and it was like yeah it was th- you know uh, talk to me about references and guest stars that have not aged well you, you got two right there that would be one yes yeah. but uh, astonishing x-men was kind of a really cool take on more of the classic x-men really cool interesting story with an interesting uh lineup really enjoyed that book when it was out in, back in 2004 so you know yeah. but before we knew kind of some bad things um yeah. and then uh one of the things he really came back is um an artist on avengers on canny avengers when that was happening Ooh, but also then right uh he had really good success with star wars so he was yes, an artist a primary artist on star wars and that was uh, that was under the Marvel. Yeah, that's right. Because he did do the launch in 2015. I remember picking up this first issue at the Vault of Midnight, which is a shop on Todd. I know you're familiar with S- several mm-hmm. locations around the state yep. of Michigan. There's one in downtown Great Grand store. Rampets, which was just right down the block from where I worked at the time when I was in radio. And I remember picking up this first issue and how exciting it was. Unfortunately, this was about six or seven issues before the everybody gets a lightsaber issue, which I know turned <laughs> you and John off the book permanently, which is which is fine. Um, yeah, I don't know how long he was involved in it, but he, wonderful artist. Uh, and you know, you know, I'm kind of picky about comic book artists in general, but I remember how much I really respect what this guy did. So do we know what do we know what um, what he passed from? Was he ill? 
I, mean, I'm, I don't, I'm you know, sure. his sister yeah. announced his death. He's 52. That's very young. Yeah. Um, not aware of if he was suffering any health issues. Uh, he was a crea- uh, chief creative officer of Inhumanoids, which is a publisher as well. So he um, is a well-respected uh creator and it's kind of yeah. sad to see him pass away but as yeah, of right now out. we don't know um why he died but that's just sad to see someone 52 so many more years ahead especially yeah. illustrators and comics you see people that are in their you know late 70s still drawing right and uh right no yeah because it's, it's, it's not like you're going to work in the mines you can sit and do it and as long as you don't have like arthritis and it goes badly but uh, still I yeah. mean, you, you and I both deal with well, that. Well, Simonston is still, yeah, not, still yeah. drawing. And it, yeah, we yeah. got some of these classic creators that are still doing their thing. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah, sad days. It. Yeah, the tough stuff. So be- best wishes, of course. I mean, that's three years older yeah. than me, Charlie. That 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 yeah. kind of like, ooh, and well, four years older than you. And we feel. I was going to, yeah. yeah, we, yeah, our hearts go out uh, to his family and always, you know, I, uh, always take care of yourself if you can hopefully it would that, exactly. was, that wasn't it but anyway uh moving on i was excited to share this movie with april this morning because my wife is really into the witchy stuff particularly uh the you know the the part of the mcu that deals with that agatha all along comes on this week wednesday we're both That's very right. excited here you're very excited i know yeah um but now there's room, rumors going around uh and this is uh, i'd be curious to see what the source on this is but that um uh, Elizabeth Olsen's character of the Scarlet Witch could be getting her own film in development uh, with a couple of writers' names that I don't immediately recognize. Um, but uh, this is learning from Production Weekly. Don't know much about them as a source. They uh, kind of put out what's going on into Hollywood production. So okay. it's actually a resource if you just have to dig for okay. information. So not gotcha. bad. Now, this is a – the character's in a tough spot because, yes. uh, you know, starting in WandaVision where she, you know, created this bubble of reality, but we ultimately found out, well, she was manipulated by Agatha, which is where we're going to spin with that new series. But then taking <clears throat> the character into the second Doctor Strange film in 2022 uh, where she became a bloodthirsty villain uh, and then apparently died. So it's really – <clears throat> interesting to me how and when we're going to see her now between this being announced, meaning it's anywhere between three years away or maybe longer. And the fact that um, <clears throat> the uh, vision series vision quest or white vision or whatever it is, has also gone into production, but white vision the- would be a very bad title. I think so. Yeah. So, well, they had black Panther, but yeah, that you're right. That doesn't fit the bill. Um, does not fit the bill at all. So, um, it does have some speculation that, uh, Wanda could be involved in that series in some fashion and that could then dovetail into her having her own project. So I would be very curious to see how that's all going to play out. Certainly in, the Marvel comics, the character has had her ups and downs. She was responsible for uh, House of M, the near extermination of the mutants, if I remember correctly. But that was a storyline from damn near 25. You know, yeah, it doesn't work when ago. there's no yeah. mutants in the MCU yet. Yeah, there's no mutants. Oh, okay, we got you. They're all dead. See, yeah. I accomplished it. Or if yes. she could be like, uh, no, I'm bringing them all back. Um, maybe she'll kill all the, the maybe she'll kill all the scrolls because we got to wrap up that part in the MCU. Oh, Charlie. no. Inhumans. Get rid of the Inhumans. Well, well, the scrolls. Remember all the scrolls that, and then we oh, had, uh, yeah. uh, yes, the Super Scroll by play by Amelia Clark. We got to get rid of her. So, yeah, I maybe mean, that's what we yeah. do. No yeah. more scrolls. <laughs> yes, we can use magic to get rid of our clear production uh, missteps in, in all, the MCU. All of the dangling plot points. Yeah, killed. Yes, to make it. Uh, she can do this, are, but yeah. But apparently they have found a writer uh, and a partner, uh, Jack Schaefer and Megan McDonald, who are working on this. Um, And quite honestly, it's very easy to flip the script, as we would say, to bring her back. Nothing is ever written in the comics that hasn't ever, you know, been rewritten, retconned, as we would say. That's an old term in the comic books. And I am interested. Can we just get away from the fact that maybe we can bring her back to a place with the new vision, maybe that's where they come to terms on. We're here together. We're damaged people. You had a reboot vision. Maybe I need one too. Right. And we give up on the whole thing about her kids because those kids were never real. They were just right. creatures. So maybe it's right. they 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 work through that. There's some therapy done, 
And now we can say, maybe she can come back in a different light with vision. They find a new path and just right. get rid of that old, all of the baggage that kind well, of is holding Marvel back. I mean, don't forget that the the multiverse as it was and the what if, whatever it is, does open up the door to be like, well, this is me from a different universe, or that's how they're going to do the, the Fantastic Four in the film that's yeah. being produced right now. And we have the Secret Wars coming up, and we have you know Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. So yeah, the, the multiverse stuff is going to stay in play. Uh, so I because they've already involved this character in that portion of this, I have no doubt that it will be relevant in some way, shape or form. Um, but <clears throat> I like, you know, I like Elizabeth Olsen as an actress. I like the Scarlet, Witch as a character. She's part, you know, very, very important Avengers character. I hope her I'm accent comes back, back though. I don't feel like she ever really gave the accent up. I think you'd have to show me, uh, something where you think she doesn't have her accent. Cause oh, I feel Charlie, like her for, in the first movie, her accent's pretty damn thick and it comes back and she sounds like she's from the Midwest. I don't know. I don't know. I think you're going to have to show me the instant replay on that. She is. She is as she. Yeah. Her accent is as as much as it is. What is it? Lot wherever the hell she was from. Sokovia. Slobobia. Slobobia. Sokovia. Yes. Yeah, as you are Canadian. Oh, I, did, I get accused of that all the time with all my stories. I know. No one's accused <laughs> her of being Sokovian now. Well, um, maybe they did, but she just made him go. <laughs> And all that different stuff. All right. Well, shifting gears. Uh, and obviously, we don't know when we would see this. My guess is three or four years. That's my vibe. Uh, the same way that I feel yeah. like the, the vision will be at least three years. Um, okay. So as you said, you said this in our Discord earlier this week. Who knew we would be looking at a trilogy for Venom and then to have a third film where they're saying, we're wrapping up the dynasty. We're doing it. I I've never been a fan of these films, but Todd, I know you have a you have a varying take. Like, hey, you know, why not? Dumb fun. I I couldn't. I, I could barely sit through that second film. Um, oh, the second film was horrible, Charlie. I, I I I could at least find something fun, and enjoyable in a B movie tier of the first movie. Sure. The second movie was just just a hot garbage dump, and this third film. Maybe, maybe they finally get it right. I don't know. There's but. A, yeah, there's, and they're, they're putting, a, yeah, so we got a, a final trailer for uh, the third Venom film, which they're calling the, oh, I love, <laughs> I do absolutely love, and it's fun, the, in this article that we're looking at, that they took a bit from Parks and Recreation with the wonderful Jenny Slate holding out her hand, saying money please with uh, Venom superimposed over her face. She was a character in the first film. She was one of the science people. Oh, at, God, yeah, about that. yeah, I know. So that, that you know, and I just it just clicked with me looking at it. But uh, the final film being called The Last Dance, which we're getting next month, I think in October. So. Uh, October 25th. It's, yeah, the end of the, it's the end of uh, spooky season. Yeah, so just yeah, exactly. in time. And you know, it, it, Venom in itself, he's kind of a he's kind of a horror character in some ways. Yeah. But this, much like the franchise overall, but maybe this one a little bit more, is turning more into a science fiction monster movie because uh and I have not really kept up with all of the Venom stuff. I was there for the character's introduction, which was in, in Amazing Spider-Man 299 going into 300, where he reveals himself uh, as Spidey's new supervillain, uh, being that <clears throat> Eddie Brock, who was a whose career was destroyed by Peter Parker exposing him uh, as a uh, corrupt journalist, then found himself combined with Peter's black costume and blah, blah, blah. Of course, these films contain none of that because... There's no Spider-Man in these Spider-Man films. The Spumco remains free of the Spum part of it. The Sp, it's Umco. <laughs> it's the part of it without Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, we, we get to this and we are seeing that the overall overlord of the symbiote's home planet, which is where it doesn't really fit into the whole Secret Wars part of it, is Null. And Null, and Todd, I told you this in the pre-roll, is actually being played by Norman Reedus of The Walking Dead. Is it? That's what I read. Is that not what well, it says that's in this what, article? It, but it's not an IMDb. It's not illustrated anywhere. There's a thing coming soon.com. Why fans think Norma Reedus is playing null. Oh. So I'm looking up. There's nothing like. Well, you are, that's very responsible of you to, to double check that. But yeah, that is, I feel like something that got tossed out there this week. And maybe I fell victim to uh, the news baiting. Uh, it was not on. Uh, we got this covered because, you know, I stay away from that. But uh, yeah, this was a 
kind of a wild trailer. I think it was set to the tune of what was the, I've already forgotten the song. It's a classic. Rock oh, song. it was uh, Baby, It's a Wild World, right? Oh, yeah. Cat Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're seeing. Oh, no, no, this, no, no. Sundown. No, that's in the next story we're going to talk about. The oh, other that's story. right. I'm, I'm getting I'm f- sorry. I yes, feel I'm like down. I yeah. feel like you're yeah. right about that Cat Stevens one. But again, this is how prepared we are to do this. We did watch the trailer. I swear to God. Um, but I probably watched it a couple of hours ago and I've forgotten. But uh, but yeah, so this is going to be involved. Run, and then we've got Juno Temple of uh, Ted Lasso fame is the female lead. She's a scientist uh, at the. Science Institute where Eddie, I'm sure, gets locked up at some point and then escapes. But we're getting... Is Michelle Williams coming back? I don't know what they did with that character. Did she get killed off in the second one? I think she I... got married and ran away. Uh, yeah, I don't see her in the credits. Basically, it's right now. Yeah. Um, we've got Tom Hardy, Chuel Tor, Ejifor, Juno oh, Temple, yeah, Rice Ethans, Peggy yeah. Lou, uh, Elana Urbach, and Stephen Graham. And it's interesting to Reese Ethans played the lizard exactly right? I mean, and he is so, in the clip he's the hippie in the van hippie man yeah, yeah he, he ends up uh at some point eddie ends up in a you know hitches a ride in a van a lot of the uh well like jane silent bob strikes back when he's with the scooby-doo gang that's what it made me think of and he's like he's the stifler character he's the sean, sean patrick scott <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and then we do have the one guy who's in the symbiote prison Stephen graham as patrick mulligan a detective who previously encountered eddie and is imbued with a symbiote named toxin so oh there you go okay, the the so we're yeah. gonna have a uh, another venom character and then null uh yeah all we got in the, yeah. the the trailer was a picture of a guy with straggly white hair so norman reed is probably would work for straggly white hair that's a, that's, um, a, that's how yeah. they faked me out well i yes. dear dear listeners my apologies. Um, but yes, uh, we get this, as we said, in a little over a month's time. Um, I will see it because Todd and I are going to talk about it. But um, yeah, I, I, I got to keep my expe- my expectations rock low, rock bottom low after that second film, which was, I, I, just, I, I just don't even know what they were thinking about. Now, is the, spum, is the Spumco starting to wind down after the... It feels colossal, like it, because what's colossal, left... Yeah, a colossal string of failures. Oh, Craven. Craven is what's left. That's okay. the only thing that's still, like, they've shown us that actually is going to be made. Yeah. Everything else, uh, except maybe the Spider-Man Noir show, I think, is the only thing that maybe is still, like, has yeah. some heat but on the big screen, I feel like that's no, nothing is kind nothing of, is kind of finny. I mean, Madam Web is not getting a sequel. Sorry, Charlie. Mad, Madam Web was a colossal failure. Uh, Morbius was a colossal critical failure. I know for a fact. I don't know how it did at the box office. Um, so what? I, I'm I'm very curious to know as it relates to the big screen what comes next for Spider-Man related characters. I feel like this week we got to drop that or maybe at least a, a little bit of news that Tom Holland Spider-Man is coming back and Miles Morales was going to be a part of it but it's just rumors. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I'm 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 kind of curious how they're going to kind of kind of drive the boat on that one. But anyway, uh as far as this movie goes, we'll see it. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure many of you will see it and we will have, if not a full spoiler cast, we'll do something similar to what we did last week with Beale Juice and we'll have it. Toss it in the geek easy. (laughs) Yeah. We'll toss it. Yeah. Tossing it in the geek easy sounds like code for like a gangland execution. Oh, we'll toss it in the geek easy too behind the ear. Um, yeah, exactly. So, um, I'm oh so oh you I'm sorry you had a subheader on this oh yeah oh that's that's a that's a pretty quick thing so the creators of yeah. Null said that they want their money or want something for having their character included and quite honestly when it comes to creators wanting their wanting some type of um, yeah. no. financial uh, remuneration read, read done your when you work for yeah. unless it's in your contract that if a character you make shows up on the screen. You're not getting anything. So sure. well, you know what, Todd? I got several words for you to string that together. Um, blunt man and chronic. <laughs> Remember that entire movie? Absolutely. <laughs> that yes. was the plot yes. line of I mentioned Jane Silent Bob Strike Back for the second time. I that, that I need I, and I had brought up in conversation with April earlier this week. I have to watch that one again. That was one of Kevin Smith's later movies that I can actually stomach because it's fun where you get into the stuff he's made, you know, in the later two thousands and there's not a lot of fun to be had in Tusk. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now. Oh, yep, <laughs> sorry, Kevin yep, Smith. I, I'm perfectly fine with Kevin Smith 
yeah. doing what he wants to do, and I don't have to watch it. So as long as you don't see it. Let's um, get that yoga hosers. Oh, 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 so painful. All right, I watched this trailer this afternoon, uh, yes. and this is out the first part of next month, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, but yes. this is over on Max, and it is a new interpretation of Stephen King's classic, Salem's Lot. Uh, and April's first question was, oh, you know, it, it looks better than the, this was a TV movie. We talked about this. You and I talked From about this. From the 80s, yeah. Time. The early yeah. 80s, David Soul. Uh, it was a mini series. I think it was maybe okay. two to three parts. And I enjoyed it. But it was from 1980 on TV. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, do do your math on that. Um, but, yeah, this is – it follows your very typical Stephen King archetypes. It's a small town in Maine called Salem's Lot or The Lot as the uh, locals refer to it as. Do we have any name stars in this one? I, I, I feel like I recognize a person or two. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, yeah, what's her name? Very got famous it. actress. Um, <laughs> very famous actress. What is her name? I'm tracking, looking for it. Tracking. Uh, looking here. Uh, oh, Lewis Pullman is Ben. So we've got Bob. Oh, Bob. Ben. He's Mackenzie he's, Lee, he, Alfre Woodard. Oh, Alfre John Woodard. Benjamin Bill, Hickey, Bill Camp, Jordan Preston Carter, Nicholas Cravetti, William Sadler. Obviously, William uh, Sadler Bill is Sandler. great. Yep. Yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. And we've got the, the son of, um, from the boys, uh, uh, the main the main bad guy. Oh, the, the, son. the, the son. OK. Yes. He plays the little boy you see as kind of who's tapping on the window. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So is, that's going to be great. In. Let me yes. in. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. This is a standalone uh, original film. So it's not a miniseries per se. I would assume no. it'll be a feature length. So, uh, you know, 90 minutes or more. Uh, but yeah, uh, perfect. Oh, it says October 11th. You wrote down. Thank you very much. Correct. Um, I, I knew it was that, that, that first part uh, of October. So yeah, that looks, looks really great. good. Yeah. Great, 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 good, very good trailer. They have that song sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. It worked really well for Gordon it. Light me the vibes. It's one of my father's all time favorite musicians. And it's, I it's think great. everyone over, the age of 70 loves Gordon. Lightfoot, exactly. Charlie. And he's Canadian, which, you know, being from Detroit, that's a big deal to us. And the <laughs> and Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun fact by people from Michigan. Oh, my God. Great Lakes. Great Lakes drama turned into a song. Oh, my God. Yes. Our international listeners and people who don't live in the Midwest are probably like, what are these idiots talking about? Edmund, what now? Isn't that a beer from the what's the what's the brewery that does Edmund Fitz? It's on tap at my local. Place. Oh, the it's it, that is um, Great Lakes Brewing in Cleveland. Yes, 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 yes. Great brewery. Yeah, yeah. yeah and a great big Bob's friend of the show uh, keeps on tap. Um, yeah. All right. Well, this is you're familiar with the show and I'm not. So you take it away. Talk about Good Omens ending. Yes, this is very sad news because Neil Gaiman is a lot of people looked at him as like he's a geek who's done well. Every time he's involved in something, he's usually on the right side of everything. Uh oh. And he has made the show Good Omens, which I loved to pieces. First season was amazing. I need to watch the second season. It's a great show, Charlie. You would love it. Uh, John Hamm is in it. Someday. Yeah, it's great. Uh, David Tennant uh, and, oh, blinking on his name. Michael uh, Sheen. Yes, yes. Basically playing angels and yeah. a de devil. Really good. Um, John Hamm's great. He plays one of the heavenly hosts that comes down and manages things. Really enjoyed it. Season three is, in, is basically being halted because Neil Gaiman is now there is accusations about misconduct by Mr. Gaiman. Ah, uh, damn it. Yes. And that, that is a shame because he's a great creator and leads us back to how do you separate the good and the bad and the ugly from creators that, you yeah. know, just Whedon, I, JK Rowling. Yeah. How do you, how do you yeah. do it? So it's, what do you say? So you say anything they did in the past before you knew is okay, but everything new is bad. But then you think of like who would be employed by this? Yes, he's going to make money, like J.K. Rowling. So it's it's really sad because a lot of people find joy in those creations, regardless of the creator. Yeah, yeah. Or or it's a, it's an you know for a consumer, ignorance of that kind of thing can be bliss, but that doesn't mean that you turned a blind eye to it but again as a, yeah it, it's a slippery slope because as, as a consumer you don't have any involvement around that kind of thing or influence at all um you know if you grew up tied again back to joss whedon you grew you grew up uh not grew up but as as a young adult you loved his work i love yeah. the 
Buffy movie that came out in 92. That was fun and exciting. The Buffy series, the Angel series that We just talked about the comic it. book that he John Cassidy did with him. That it's yeah, like Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you find out that he's just he's not a good guy. I mean, rock music is very much the same. I love, for example, classic rock artist Warren, the late Warren Zevon. Uh, produced great, insightful music. He was a musician's musician. Bruce Springsteen, Jackson Brown, those guys all loved him. He was not a good guy. Not a good guy in any way, shape, or form. If, because I've read his autobiography, assuming that most of that is true, written by him or written by people who know. So yeah, art, uh, separating the art from the artist, it's... I don't even think you can really draw a solid, well, this is how you approach it or think about it in this way. I, I don't really, it dep- I guess it depends on what it is. I mean, if it's something, you know, if it's, uh, if it's, you know, uh, sexual assault, God forbid, or if it's, you know, some kind of, you know, with JK Rowling, you know, if that part of it touches your life, I'm sure it's much more impactful to somebody who, you know, it doesn't touch their life. And maybe you're like, that's terrible, but it doesn't mean I hate the work. Or maybe it's terrible, so everything is tainted and I can never touch it again. Like, or I can never care for it again. I just don't know. Yeah, there's apparently there's a, a podcast from Tortoise Media called Master the Allegations Against Neil Gaiman, which at that point... You have a whole um, podcast he's accused about, of sexual. Oh yeah, yeah, he's accused of sexual assault, where then at this point it's <sighs> like, do you wait out the legal proceedings to see if he truly is uh, guilty. I mean, you want to allow people that have allegations to have their day in court. So right. then is it the right thing just to say, pause it all then? Um, but it is become, it's, it's a sticky wicket, man. It's like, yeah. you want to make sure that people, victims are heard right. and given their day in court. But you also want to say, is every allegation, um, should it be fed it out before it's brought forward? I well, don't know. In in the court of public opinion, you know, no, because people catch wind of this and they're, you know, especially in recent years with the Me Too movement as it relates back to this, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Um, but again, he was... Definitely, he was definitely guilty, proved conclusively by a, you know a, a ton of witnesses and stuff. But this is again, this says uh, the accusations uh, came out in July, which was just a few months ago. So obviously, the discovery process behind this is still happening. But There's a it, lot of livelihoods on the line. Yeah, it's, it's it, other people that had right. nothing to do with Neil Gaiman right. doing this that are trying to earn a paycheck by right. writing and things like that. So it should right. be like, and maybe Neil Gaiman should just say, "Hey, I want all." proceeds that i would earn from this to go towards victims rights right. and at least we could say he's not profiting from his right. bad behavior i don't know right or he just ejects himself and says please maybe carry on the show without me i mean he's like no longer said, involved in it yep and he yeah. says i won't be making money off of this but i want I, the cast yeah, members and i yeah. will you know have my day in court yeah yeah exactly it's, it's shitty it, it would yeah it would be great uh, if it was that cut and dry, but again, uh, because this is, I mean, you know, sexual assault is, uh, it's terrible in the entertainment industry, obviously. The and, burden of proof is so yeah. hard. It's so right. frustrating and it's so demeaning to everybody involved. Right. Well, when there's um, yeah. when there's blood in the water and an accusation has been made, you're right. There are people who just uh, their minds are just made up um, in the court of public yeah. opinion. As I said, let the legal process move forward. But uh, hopefully there will be some uh, deference to, again, the people who, you know, lose their jobs with this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I talked on uh, on Holocron uh, with Mark about the Alkalite, which was a an, an unfortunately very unpopular recent Star Wars production that got canceled. And you have people in fandom like, yay, it got canceled. I'm not excited it got canceled. I'm not excited that this whole group of people lost a job because, hey, I've been on the job hunt for a number of time, number of times in my career. It's not fun yeah. to look for a new job, and uh, that unemployment creates uncertainty. Especially if you had nothing to do with what is driving right. all exactly. of the drama. Yeah. You just have to you just have to deal with it. So um, I would say best of luck uh, to everyone involved in this production, um, and I I hope that justice justice is served. And if if in fact he is guilty of that, I hope that it's that it's proven justice is done, but, but I hope for the best for these people because that is just yes. unbelievably tough. Yes. Unbelievably tough. All right. Well, that takes us out of the news. We are due at the geek easy. Got to get out my Fuber app, my feeble Uber app, order up that nasty cab. Oh, 
smells like a hot garbage dump in here, but uh, he's got the air conditioning running, which you think would help, but it doesn't. But he's got the AM radio plan. Probably going to make people puke. Oh my God. Okay. Just to push it out, push out. You, you got two air fresheners in your pocket, but the AM radio's plan. And I hear this advertisement. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all in one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web based podcasting solution, it provides high quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting the Geeky Z cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So I am back into the world of Middle Earth with The Rings of Power Season 2. I watched the first episode, and man, oh man, this is so much fun. I'm really digging right. this show. It's this is the good. prequel, 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 prequel. Thousand years. Wait a second. Um, You're saying this, is a pre- this second season is a prequel to the first season? No, 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 no. The whole show is a prequel, <laughs> Charlie. Sorry. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. We, we watched uh, a few uh, episodes of the first season. As you know, it's, just, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not my thing. So I, It's a slog. Yeah, episode. the first season was mm-hmm. a slog. It finally caught really some 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 momentum i really yeah. enjoyed it and then it yeah. kicked off this first episode is is really awesome this is all about the rings of power being created so we're finally right. getting there and things are coming forward which i really dig it and this is really sauron's story which i find interesting because it's really the way they managed the first episode it really changed my idea of what is possible with the show and what they did so i'm really really excited about the season because um some people are frustrated some people say this is a very complex show like i need to know way too much about it. it's very dense and yeah. say so they, they said it's dense and i feel dense and i'm like yeah yeah you might this uh, is, this it's is making, this is making me dense yeah um, and then somebody's like they talk about elvish and i'm like but it's not the elvish uh what is it the uh the elfin magic no it's not the uh, the keebler elves this is about the re- regular elves in <laughs> elvender you're yeah. saying that there there are no uh, there are no cookies in this show at the end of no the no end cookies of no, no cookies. Like, gimme, gimme, gimme. So, nope. you know, I'm, I'm curious about shows like this, um, being that this is a multi-million dollar epic yes. and they spend gajillions on it. <clears throat> and we know that Amazon is, you know, Bezos is, you know, richer than Abraham Lincoln. Uh, or, you know, with more money than Davy Crockett. I was uh, drawing from my Forrest Gump-isms. Um, Davy Crockett has money? I, I did not know he was the uh, uh, a baron of... Beaver Baron. Don't you know that they, don't you remember that was one of his lines when Forrest sitting on the bump, t- uh, the the bus mm. bench speaking to the woman says, yes, ma'am, we've got more money than Davy Crockett. Bubblegum shrimp. Um, how do they <clears throat> make money on a show like this? How do they uh, draw, it's, yeah, how do they draw in more, more subscribers when it feels like almost everyone in the universe has Amazon Prime and would get it anyway? 
this is more to retain subscribers by adding value, Charlie, because okay. as the okay. cost of Prime goes up every year, mm-hmm. people may say, well, uh, is it worth it much. for yeah. two days? Sh- exactly. And it's like, well, now I got Amazon Music. I got this. So it's yeah. not just the delivery. So when it was just the delivery, you're like, I get all this extra stuff. Now it's like, well, I got all this extra stuff and, and, and delivery still around. And now yeah. they get, you know, yeah. maybe your stuff doesn't okay. show up on time or maybe it's like, oh, it takes five days to that. So this is really like adding value outside of that. Like now there's okay. NFL games. So you think how much oh. the NFL games on Prime cost, you think that was cheap. So anybody that doesn't care about that stuff, now you're basically bearing the burden of any prime increases uh that you don't care about what they're yeah. offering so some people yeah. that doesn't want the tv shows people don't want that yeah. and they get that i i i think this is what amazon's play was basically yeah. we need people to subscribe to prime and you're going to pay for all this extra stuff even if you don't want it, it was kind of like the people that subscribed to cable and got espn i'm like i don't watch sports why am i paying Right. for sports when I don't watch it. So it's this will turn into a point where people will say, is Amazon Prime worth the value at $200 a year? Yeah, right. Because yeah, it's cause now, it's, what, 130 it's, 140 it's a, I thought it was pretty close to a buck 50 I'm not sure. But it was a buck 20 two years ago. Or maybe and it was $79 yeah. when it kicked off. Yeah, exactly. So, so they're yeah. just yeah. So yeah, if you're wondering, obviously that's this, that's where the money's coming from. But yeah, is it is it really um but yeah, as a retention tool, it's your it's your loss leader. It's your you know it's your your gum aisle as you're standing in line at Meyer. You know what I mean? Like oh well, I really need an air freshener and gum and second air freshener reference of the show. Sorry, it doesn't smell bad in here, by the way. Just in case you were wondering, Charlie, um, you're you're making people like don't want smell vision for this podcast. Oh, you don't. Think but so? I would I would say at this point, it's like if you don't feel it's worth the money, you can still get like free shipping if you spend thirty five bucks on Amazon. So it might be right. a point where you just say I don't need all that extra stuff. But if you want all that extra stuff it's there and yeah. it's adding value to you if you use could most be. of it could be yeah well, but it's ahead. but it's a yeah it's so season you, two you've watched the first episode how many episodes six eight uh there should be like eight and i can't remember how many seasons have been approved but this is a very expensive show oh, so i don't know yeah. how the viewership is going and if amazon even cares but maybe a scenario is like well people are going to turn in for jack reacher do we really need to spend 500 million dollars on another season of the show i don't know right. I'm enjoying it while it lasts. Yeah, like I said, I've always been somewhat mystified how streamers like Netflix and then this arm of it and and Matt, like how are they making the money on the original? Retention. So, it's retention. about retention, Charlie. Retaining yes. water, except the water is dollars. Retaining dollars. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Okay, well, I saw, uh, I saw one thing and I, I read a couple of different comics, but okay. we went to the movies. I was kind of hesitant to see this movie because the trailer was creepy as shit. Oh, yeah. Um, but it is uh, Speak No Evil. And I learned a little bit about this. April and I were talking about this on our, our walk yesterday because we saw it on uh, f- uh, thurs- Thursday or Friday. I think Friday night. Um, this was based off of a Danish film. Yeah. Uh, back in and the the gentleman who I don't have the, I don't have it up right now, but the gentleman who wrote that original screenplay based it off of um, an experience that he had when he and his wife or his family in general were on holiday. They met another couple from another place. Vacation ended. They went their separate ways. And at a later point, the Danish writer receives a postcard. Hey, it was great to meet you. C- you know, come stay at our country house uh, if you're ever in the blah, blah. And this guy said, yeah, I don't think I'd be comfortable with that. But what if I did and all this fantastical, horrible stuff happened? <laughs> and that's how he wrote the screenplay. Yes. Um, so, it. yeah, basically to break it down, we have two stars in this film. We have... Uh, Mackenzie Davis, who you've seen, she was in one of the Terminator films, and uh, I think she was. Oh, I think she was in that Station Eleven uh, adaptation, yeah. which, is, which is set in Michigan, about post-apocalyptic Michigan. And then you, of course, have James McAvoy, Professor Xavier, and uh, star of many, many other things. And Scoot McNeary, the name that Scoot is not a real name, sorry, but you can't be a Scoot. That's a big pass on that, but it, it's the exact thing. So this, uh, they are an American couple who love and live in London. They're on vacation in Italy, and they bump into another couple played by McFoy and Lily, Lily. I think it's Lily James. I didn't look it up, but it, it took me Aisling Franciosi. It's 100% looks like Lily James. If she yes, has she's a, very attractive lady, yes, but exactly. not her. But not yeah. like, yeah, I was, I was positive it was Lily James. But anyway, yeah, they, they, they're they on holiday and uh, it's same thing, you know, holiday ends, uh, our people, oh, and uh, uh, 
Mackenzie Davis and her husband have a daughter who is uh, she, she's a little she's a little fragile, you know, has a stuffed animal she sleeps with and has a tough time managing her emotions and stuff. Uh, who's you know, she's 10, 11 years old. And this other couple have a son who is mute, uh, who. McAvoy's character, who is a doctor, says, well, he's got this condition with his tongue and blah, blah, and he really can't, his tongue is too small and he can't speak, and he gives it a name, and I'm curious if it's a real thing. Um, but not to give anything away. Um, tiny tongue-itis? It, tiny tongue-itis, that's exactly the exact name I of it. I love it. So anyway, our, uh, our main characters go home, and just like with what I described to you, they receive a postcard. Hey, come visit us uh, in the countryside. And then this ties right back into obviously what you saw in the trailer. They do go to visit them in the countryside and everything is weird and really kind of off putting. And naturally there's a dark secret. Contained. What? But it's called speak no evil because again, the young boy who is their son speaks no evil. Sp he cannot speak. Um, so anyway, this is in theaters now. It just came out. I didn't look at any of the facts and figures from it. It is a Blumhouse, so it's made twenty million yeah. gross against a budget of fifty million. So not yeah, small yeah, budget. Yeah, so they're on their way. They're on their is way. Is it good or bad? Way. Would you give it a Charlie's thumbs up or thumbs down? You know what? Even if you mean uh, best movie ever, worst movie ever. <laughs> Good or bad? Would you, would you um, recommend me to see it? I would because you say, thought you enjoyed it versus yeah. it's bad, but watch it anyways. I would no. It was not one of those. It's not ending up on bad trip to the movies with the Cardinals. Okay. Um, yes, good movie. Uh, and okay. again, I was uh, I was hesitant because I found the trailer a bit creepy. Yes, uh, April kind of unnerving. Me yeah, she kind of pushed me over the line. We went to go see it, so it was great. Uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily figure out the twist. Um, but it's, uh, it's a very dark twist. Um, so Ooh. yeah, yeah, go check it out. I, th I, yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was plenty dark, uh, and hopefully I've not, I've is this tied to M night Shyamalan? Like, yep. It's, it's, what's his name? Uh, the beast from, uh, oh, I've got it. <laughs> Glass. You know what? because it's, uh, because M night Shyamalan's last film had no twist. Uh, this guy stole the twist. That was, this is the twist of 2024. Ah, that's the twist. He stole the twist. the twist. The twist. The twist is not, yeah. You're. It's not immutable as far as uh, not being stolen. So Twister yeah, so that, the movie. There we go. That's yeah, how we that make was, a Twister movie. I yes. love it exactly. I read two comics this week, but for sake oh. of brevity, I picked the I, I picked the better of the two. Um, I'm actually branching out into, in addition to having Marvel Unlimited, subscribing to some series here and there that are actual monthly series. I get a date and drop. I do that with uh, the G.I. Joe miniseries, though one of them was really delayed. I think the last issue of Destro has been pushed back two or three weeks. Mm, so I've not seen really? it, the most recent issue. Issue four has been pushed because I keep getting, oh, your thing has been pushed. So I've not, I've not, uh, I'm current with that, but it's not the most recent issue has been put out. But I read the final issue of volume two of Star Wars, which I think I talked about in a recent uh, issue. It was, it was extra long length and it was okay. It was okay. It's, that's hmm. I think the second volume of that series has been better than the first volume of that series. And yeah. now they're going to move into your post return of the Jedi time frame with a, uh, yeah. a mini series, which I'm also signed up to get that's going to hit in November. But uh, I read that and the other one I read and I was teased about this. And I got to tell you, I was sucked in by the jackets because they have new outfits, but it is Avengers assemble. But think about this, the ERS at the end of Avengers stands for emergency response squad. So what they, and it is set not a in, call in maybe. Yeah, not, it's not a call in show. Uh, basically the setting is Avengers mansion, which the most recent time that I was reading the invention uh, the Avengers, they, their headquarters was in the Antarctic in the body of a hollowed out eternal. A la what you see in the, um, seems like a great, it's got great yeah, bones. Exactly. Yeah, literally. But yeah, <laughs> would you want to live in the Arctic? And, and then obviously they came and went. But this is back in the Avengers Mansion. So it's a classic setting. Uh, and you have a group. I would liken this to the 1970s and 80s Marvel title, The Defenders. You don't have a sol you don't have a solid group of here's a mission. We're having a, you know, because the Avengers is very parliamentary procedure. Sounds like it, my bowling yeah. team, Charlie. I'm like, hey, I need some subs. Yeah. Are you available Wednesday? It's, sure. It's, well, Come it's, on it's, in. It's the exact same kind of deal. You're on the roster of the, you know, the ERS squad and you just show up. And that's what happens in this. So we open up with Cap uh, and uh, Carol Danvers and then Photon, who's Monica Rambeau, shows up. Uh, Janet Van Dyne, who's the WASP, shows up. And they've got, they've got an emergency. They have to go overseas to fight the daughter of the Red Skull. 
who is called Sin. That's, that's a throwback to the Mark Grunewald, Captain America stuff. She sounds um, like an 80s image. It sounds like an 80s image, com- or like a yeah, like a uh, not, early yeah. 2000s image character. Yeah, Sin. like like Witchblade. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, so they have to go and fight Sin. Sin's ability is to project negative emotion on people and make them act crazy and stuff. You know, very close. Oh, she's got my power? <laughs> yeah, oh, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, Todd's negativity makes people makes me crazy. Yes. Um, but uh at the same time, what she's doing is a cover for the return of the Serpent Society, which is very timely because uh Sidewinder, who's the head of the Serpent Society, is going to be one of the main villains in Captain America Brave New World, played by Giancarlo Esposito, coming up in February. So that's very good timing. Um, while our heroes are fighting overseas. Other members of the uh, who are called to the ERS, I can't keep looking back because I don't want to say the wrong letters of the ERS. The ER. The, yeah, the, into the ER. ERS. Uh, Going to urgent care. Avengers yeah. urgent care. Avengers yes. urgent care. Zuh. Zuh. Yes. Um, but no, we get other here. We get, uh, the, you know, we get. Uh, Hercules shows up. Wonder Man, which is what sucked me, sucked me in. I love Wonder Man as a character. Hawkeye shows up. Uh, she Hulk shows up and they're all sitting around at one of your typical Avengers, uh, big round tables and they're playing cards, you know, and having a good time and chuckling. Um, but this what's is their, what's their card game of choice. Pinochle. I, I, is it Canasta? Is it, oh, Todd, uh, Euchre? You'll, love, you'll love this. It's Euchre. Yeah. It's Euchre because, they, because what? one of the characters must be from Michigan. No, I, I don't recall. I'm sure it's poker. Um, yeah, but anyway, this is uh, a limited series, which again, okay. I'm, a, I'm, That's a big, a good idea. I'm a big, big believer in the limited yeah. series. You don't wear out your welcome and then enough people love it. You come back with another limited series, you know, just yes. give it to us in chunks because then you don't get, Oh, I love this title and I got 11 issues out of it and nobody else read it. So it's canceled. And yeah. then you're launching a new number one and it's like, really, we're doing this again. Yes, right. we are. Exactly. Enjoy. Exactly. Correct. So yeah. So I'd recommend that that's available okay. on comiXology or Kindle if you prefer. And of course, speak no evil is currently in theaters. So yeah, uh, that's what that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm recommending this week. So, with that, uh, we are out of here. Skipping out on the bill yet again. We don't like to mess around with these people the, at the Geek Easy, but you know what? We don't do that. Uh, <laughs> we can't. We we can't stay away. Uh, but I've got out my Air Qantas app, my uh, app to get us down to the land down under because hologram Tina and the mutants await. It is time for our annual fall media preview. Let's go for it. Welcome to another edition of Thunder. Thank you, Tina. We're sitting the geek easy. Or oh no, we are not. Oh my God, we are. We, Whoa! I, I have not left. Let me start again. It's the jet lag. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. We're sitting in the Thunderdome where the mutants have been gathered for a topic or game to be entertained. This week, we're doing our fall media preview with a emphasis on the geek part of that. We're going to start with movies, Charlie. So at this point, uh, we're in September. We already had Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That's kind of like the big geek movie that already started. It's doing very well. We enjoyed that. But the next one is Transformers 1. So we'll be talking about that next week. Uh, That should be a lot of fun. This is the first animated movie from the Transformers in almost 40 years, I guess. Uh, You know, it's a little bit less than 40 years. Um, But we're getting basically the original origin story of the Transformers with uh, uh, Pax Orion. We've got D16, aka Megatron, Chris Hemsworth. I think we've talked about this movie enough. I think this looks like a much better Transformers movie than we've had Deci- in yeah. years. Deciding to do something fun with it and give you yeah, because yes. yeah, I think uh, who's we got Scarlett Johansson is in this. John Hamm, I think I know Brian Tyree. Yep. Uh, Hen- uh, Brian Tyree. What the hell is his last name from uh, Atlanta? Brian, Brian Tyree Henry. Henry. I know. Yep. I knew it was an H. Um, yep. So yeah. So you know, good for the Transformers for figuring out they've got to do something fun, not something. Yes racist or obnoxious which is usually what those movies have ended up being i hate to say it but and right. there's a seriously lack of uh marky mark and i i prove that oh my gosh yes exactly he's i'll say he's welcome all right i saw a trailer for this one friday night it's the substance which also comes out uh oh, next yeah. week yeah this is interesting Demi- yeah this is demi moore who is t- uh who gets hooked up on this youth drug 
uh, that uh, because she's a woman of a certain age and she gets hooked on this youth drug that has a very specific regimen of how often that you can take it and she starts to abuse it. What's interesting oh, no. is when she takes it, she becomes a younger actress, which of course you oh. have to do it. Yeah. That's okay. what the tra- that that is what the trailer made it look like. Unless I was, kind I of need to watch the yeah, trailer because I don't see a link to it. But I I, yeah. I find that interesting. I heard it's yeah. great that she's coming back because I hate to see like actresses or actors that just go into right. obsolescence. So tell me right. more. Yeah, yeah, and a lot and a lot of it. And of course, obviously, this this film really hits the nail on the head because it deals with the perception of, of women in particular as they age in yes. Hollywood. Um, so I think this looks fascinating. So yeah, we will be. I think we'll be seeing this one uh, without a doubt. So all right, what's next? The Wild Robot. There's been a lot of trailers for this film. It looks very cute. Um, it's basically from the director of Lilo Stitch. You've got a. It, this kind of gives me Wally vibes, so I'm very yeah. excited about this. Looks very cute, very fun. Um, I hope this finds an end. audience. My wife saw a trailer; she's down for this. So, oh, the, cool. uh, yeah, this movie looks very, very cute. Yeah. What's next, Charlie? Uh, Megalopolis is at the end of the month. Uh, this movie is already kind of being teed up to be unsuccessful. Yes. Um, and the trailer does, this is the passion project of Francis Ford Coppola, as I understand it. And it, but I just, I, I, one, th- and, and I'm sure that the budget behind it, uh, is massively unbelievable. 115 bucks self-funded too. 100, 115 bucks. That's what you 150 said. million self-funded. Yes. Oh 150 gosh. million. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's going to hurt. So I, I don't necessarily see me seeing this one in the theaters. I just, it's, it's got bad buzz for me, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out, but I don't I may have, have to take the hit for this one. Charlie. I may have to see this one. Okay. I am mildly okay. entertained by one of the greatest directors of all time, making something that people are just like, what the what hell? the hell? Yeah, like Cloud Atlas, right? Um, yeah. All right, and we we're getting into October. What do we got? Yeah, so we got Joker Folia du uh, October fourth. So this is the sequel to the previous Joker film. This is going to be a focus of uh, Joaquin Phoenix uh, with his character, where um, essentially it's a it's going to be a a legal trial film where the Joker's on trial. Uh, tied together with uh, the Joker in prison, he meets Harley Quinn, and they fall in love. And it's going to have elements of music. I am hearing this movie is kind of a mixed bag already, but I, I am I, all I've, in on this. I've got my. Da- I do love Lady Lady Gaga, who's obviously playing yeah. Harley. Um, but yeah, I you know my most recent experience with musicals was the Strange New Worlds musical, uh, and I, and I didn't enjoy it. Um, but as, as a matter of protocol, I'm sure we'll see this film too. I just, I just don't know. But again, that Joker movie was so impactful and it was one of the last things we talked with our, mm-hmm. our late friend, Bobby Paul's about. So it's, yeah. it's very emotional. Um, but it was, it was exceptional. It was a very successful film as well for an R rated film. So while I'm sure we'll see it, I'm just not like, I'm not busting at the, busting at the gate to see it, but, but yeah, I would, I would love to, to be proved that it's, um, that it's something super great and i'm just that it defies my expectations and i'm like eh, you know i just don't know yeah i i I need to see it just to feel like what they're going for because i know it will probably be like that first movie did so well but it was also very dark and maybe it's just going to get more scrutiny because of the success it was so right we'll see it's tough um skipping ahead i assume these next couples don't really grab you but we get to the big smile Yes, yes, the movie. I have not seen the, the original. Oh, you, you should, should see it. it. You should, I will. I will see it. You should absolutely see it. Probably next weekend. It's, I'll watch it on the weekend. You know, the, the smile is it, 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 it's kind of sticky in the same way that Final Destination, which Todd and I were yeah. talking talking about, or uh, The Ring, which we also is a horror movie we, watch, we rewatched oh, yeah. again recently. But yeah, it has yeah. to do with, you know, when someone uh, – someone uh, is going to die because they're being chased by an attachment of death. They have this rictus smile and then they commit suicide. They do something. They, they do. They self harm themselves to the, they self harm themselves to death, I guess. If it oh, okay. So there's no, like it. they're not killing other people. They're actually just going to kill themselves. Yeah. No, I mean, you've seen the trailer, right? So, you know, yes. there's, there's a guy and there's the guy in the trailer who approaches our very, again, very Lady Gaga, like star yeah. or, or chapel. Roan, who is, I understand is the new hot pop star, though. I don't know a lot about yes. her. Um, but it's the same thing. She comes home one night and her boyfriend is flipping out, screaming at, 
someone who's not there. Yes. And then he bigs, grabs a big rictus smile, and then he grabs a free weight and smashes his head against it it's, it from the trailer. Um, What's better than killing you? If they're yes. just killing themselves, hey, have well, your own smile. Yeah. And it, then everybody gets transferred. You're like, yeah, what? it's yeah, like that. A, uh, it follows smile. movie, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or the or the ring. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, seven days. Yep. So, yeah. So this is, I mean, the first movie didn't have a happy ending, uh, as you can imagine. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have said that. No, no, but, that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm okay with that. I okay. uh, that's good to know. That but yes, it yes, is, go, yeah. uh, go and check that out. And then uh, the next one is we already talked about Venom that comes out October twenty. Venom, la- yeah, Venom last one is twenty five. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll get to let's see the next film. This was a weird one. Back in action. This is the movie that Jamie Fox has been going through some health issues. This movie is the last movie that he had been making oh, with uh, Cameron Diaz. And it's kind of like, once again, Charlie, apparently everybody is a serial or uh, like a hitman or a CIA agent in disguise. Right. And this is the same thing. And this is on Netflix, by the way, just so you know, it's not a a wide release. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. But it just because it feels like everybody, how many people are really either hitmen or CIA agents undercover? It feels like majority of the movies that come out of that's what it's involved. You don't know. You can't know. You can't know what they do. Apparently, maybe I am and I just haven't been activated. Who knows? But this movie, yeah, Jamie Foxx, he seems he's going down a path of like he's yeah. gonna start being on like stars films and things like I that guess. so we'll and, see and how that goes cameron diaz i thought she was out of the business i could oh she you. stopped making yeah. movies too. i couldn't yeah. tell you she the was, last thing yeah. i even i even because she's her. married to benji madden oh yeah yeah, yeah. from uh rock Which, band and they're very yeah. happy right that's okay um all yeah. right Get ready for more legacy sequels. We know there have been some that are big and successful, but this is the second film about Gladiator. Now, the first Gladiator film came out in 2000. Russell Crowe was the star. Oh. And yeah. Are you well, not entertained, Charlie? Are was, you not entertained? Oh, it was a great flick. It was a great flick. I'll have to rewatch it before we go see this because I'm sure you and I uh, will be will be talking uh, talking about this. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is, you know, this is, I believe, kind of a real time uh, evolution because you take the kid. I think it's the kid from the first film. Uh, and then you jump it forward and seeing his story. Uh, but of course, you've now matched it up. We've talked about this on the show before. You're matching it up with Denzel Washington. You're matching it up with the Mandalorian himself. Um, so you got some star power behind this. Um, my question is, how successful was the original Gladiator film? Was it a uh, was it a? Oh, giant? it was an Oscar winner. I mean, yeah. and, and that made Russell Crowe's career. But I mean, it. it, it I remember seeing it and I'm like, this movie did very well. Um, right. right. Uh, look okay. at the, the box office performance. But, you know, Ru- this this goes back to um, the director who seems like he keeps going back to his his He's previous going, movies. Yeah. Just bump him forward. And, yeah. Yeah. And it just seems like, is it is it yeah. worth it for Russell? Yeah. Uh, sorry. I mean, not Russell. Um, Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. Ridley right? Scott. It, is it is it is it worth it to go back to your old stuff or do something new? He's done that with aliens. He's done that with this. Yeah. And yeah. should he be doing something new? But you know what? Why not? And, I and, enjoy and, Gladiator. And he's an older fella, so maybe yeah, yeah, he just he wants to stick with something that I think is going to work out. So yeah, so I'm uh, I'm interested in this. Todd musicals. The next film is a musical it's uh highly anticipated by all the remember the theater remember the theater kid that we saw in the piano bar when we were in chicago this is oh (laughs) this is someone who'll be first in line to see this movie what is it yeah and and it's funny because you talked about chaperone like they did uh hot to go h-o-t-t-o-g-o Da, 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 hot to go yeah so that's chaperone charlie sorry if you're not oh, yeah. up to no no with I, the actually, cool kids. I heard yeah. that on i heard that somewhere in the last week oh or yeah. So. yeah yeah she is she is the the new theater kid that is found love so appreciate chaperone uh love wicked it. yeah uh this is going to be the uh convergence of the book by uh i think it was brian mcguire who's the writer of this actual property that got converted into a a musical now is becoming a a movie and it's going to be in two parts and you got ariana grande grande playing galinda uh galinda galinda it's great we've seen we've actually seen it um in minneapolis on stage oh very Uh, nice my wife went to see it in broadway in new york and it's amazing and it's basically retelling of wizard of oz with the the two people with alfaba alfaba and galinda and uh, this is the half. I don't know how they're going to cut it in two, but this will be big. 
Yeah, I think it'll do well. Yeah, this I, is kind of like the big Thanksgiving movie. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you that it'll do well. And speaking of things that'll do well, coming out, uh, not really as counter programming, but something that will probably take a stab out of the second week box office. Oh yeah, this, is the sequel to Moana. I it was that kind of came out kind of a weird period where I didn't have a kid around to make me mm-hmm. watch it all the time. I watched it with my brother-in-law's kids once, and I remember nothing. Uh, but oh, yeah. I, great. But, but yeah, I get the concept. It's you know, it's it's the South Seas. It's the Rock voicing a character that looks like him, and this is a this is Finding Dory too. You know what I mean? It's just it was a huge film, and this is the follow up to that. Um, but because it's only the second film, not the fourth film, like it was with Despicable Me over the summer, yeah. it probably stands a, a a good chance of being very successful, especially yeah because, because of the time frame. Kids out of school for a couple of days, take them to the movies, boom. I love the first movie, Logan. This is probably one of his favorite Disney movies of all time. He watched it completely all over again because the music's so good. The Rock is amazing in this. It's very fun. Um, And it's it's really a fun movie. And the second one, this one's a weird one because apparently this was made to be a Disney Plus series, Mm. and they were actually making it into a movie now. So I don't know if it will have the care that we want from a movie. But if it's if everybody's all in, why? not and right. uh i right. i would recommend uh once again you've seen it already so i wouldn't say watch it again just because you maybe but maybe when this hits disney plus watch this probably one. probably yeah yeah, yeah. don't easy. don't spend the 20 bucks to see it in theater if you don't need all right to. uh well, the next film is weird because it's the lord of the rings the war of the worm yeah. this is a weird anime uh version of the lord of the rings this is a uh prequel and i am curious if this is going to find any fan base, because this is definitely an anime film. So yeah. I don't have li- a lot of, it's limited. Yeah. It's def- it definitely it, it is a limited, definitely range. limited appeal. Yeah. yeah. So this will be probably a, not at the level of any success that we've seen with the other Lord of the Rings films, but I'm right. guessing this will get its fan base there that yeah. wants an anime version of this. And that it will be on right. max eventually. Oh, gotcha. So it is, it's a wide release. It'll be in theaters, is what you're telling me. It will be, but yeah, it's a weird choice for sure. So wrapping up, as we said a little bit early, the Spumco, the Spider-Man cinematic Sony, you know, the the Spum, uh, is Craven the Hunter, which was delayed from the summer. Don't know if that's going to help it. Uh, comes out December 13th. <sighs> yeah. We have uh, uh, it's Aaron Taylor Johnson, who was Quicksilver. Yes. In, uh, who I like. Uh, yeah. I like him he, in Avengers 2 or Avengers Age of Ultron. And Bullet uh, Train. Very, yeah. a very likable guy. Yeah. yeah he is playing uh, one of Spider Man's oldest villains. That was one of the, that was the, the first really old comic I ever owned. It was Amazing Spider Man 15, which was probably from 1965 first appearance of Craven the Hunter. It was a gift from my, my mom's boyfriend uh, when I was growing Wait, is up. This, do you and still own it? No, you know I sold my comics years ago. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I, what I, but I, it's what I was wow, going to That would be one that had some value. It yeah. was No, it was a very, very dog-eared copy. It, it, uh, yeah, it was in, I would say... Did, I, did you it, write, Charlie's copy of comics, it, don't it, touch. It came to me that way. It was probably poor to low fare, I would say, as far as grading. Full so. of mold. Yeah. yeah, it yeah it really did not sp- uh, smell okay. great. But this is an R-rated, very violent, even from the trailers, there's been a green and a red yeah. band trailer over it. Uh, I also know that Russell Crowe is playing uh, the Uber dad uh, character, and I believe you're also seeing Craven's brother, or a close associate, Craven's brother in the comics, is the Chameleon, uh, which was oh, spider man And they say, yeah, the Chameleon's yeah. in this. Yeah, the spider man Who's Calypso, Charlie? Calypso was his lover. Uh, Craven's love. Okay. And then Rhino's in this too. Interesting. Right. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we're getting, but again, when you collect all the Spider Man pieces without Spider Man, it's not proven to be a, a, a real crowd winner. No. Um, so I, my vibe is that, especially since we've heard nothing about other projects, this might be the end. I, I feel like this. Yeah. This be is it. the last one I think that has any yeah. like actual production completion right so what will the spum co do now well they'll you know what they'll move back into the animated spider-verse films because those spider-verse yeah yeah which feels completely yeah different than this yes 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 so uh real quickly next uh we have another live action 
Lion King. I could not make it through the first one. So that is definitely not. This is me. weird. It's a prequel. Mufasa Lion King, a prequel. Don't know right. if this will get any attention. And right. obviously you don't have the songs to back it up either. Yeah. But you know what, Charlie? It's going to have uh, Beyonce and Blue Ivy in it. So that's the thing. It's absolutely a thing. Uh, we talked about Sonic the Hedgehog not that long ago. Looks December fun, 20. December 20th. Does yep. look fun. And then uh, ending this list, your uh, Christmas delight is Nosferatu on December oh 25. God. Directed no. by yeah, uh. the, the, the director of The Witch and The Northman, which are both movies that we love and have talked about on this show. But those are not feeling good films. I know. So it's it's weird. We got L- Lily Rose Depp and Willem Dafoe and, uh, and of course, the Skarsgård. Because you can't have a horror movie these days without Scars Guard. Uh, yeah. All right, so that, yeah, that takes us out of the movies. Definitely uh, some fun stuff. April and I do the you know do the movies because we belong to the the, the club sure. at the local theater. So we go see things without guilt or expectation, and it's fine. You know what I mean? It's good. You yeah, know, no investment. You're like, I don't, I'm not spending money on this. So Exactly. But all right. Yeah. Uh, new TV shows uh, is, is the next segment. New TV shows for me is weird to talk about because we don't, you know, we don't have traditional cable. And so stuff filters through Hulu and or Disney Plus or stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't really... No, I mean, some of the stuff scrolling through here is, you know, Netflix, it's Peacock. I love this, Charlie, though. The, the article we've got is TV Guide. So it's like not even like the old days where you get one in the mail, you this. It's like this is Netflix, right. it's Peacock. Right. There's right. there's many different things. So we're, we're going to scroll ahead to, you know, interesting things that you may enjoy. And I'm going to I'm going to just keep scrolling until we get something I find interesting. Agatha, um, Agatha on September 18th. Yes. Already this talked week. about it. Yes. Yep. Penguin the next the day. Penguin. Yep. Get yeah, next uh, day on HBO Max. That H- should be really interesting. HBO, with Colin yeah. uh, Farrell reprising yep. his role, so he puts everything into what he does. So I think right. it will be at least be a quality thing. We keep going, uh, and I'm keep going. Charlie Matlock is back. No. How far did you go ahead that you caught that? You missed uh, Twilight of the Gods. Zack Snyder animated on I Netflix. did not miss it, Charlie. Oh, I'm not going to miss it either. I'm, I must have flown right past. Oh, you must be going backwards. Okay. Matlock. No, no, back. I'm going past it. Okay. Oh, Matlock. But Matlock is Kathy Bates. Is that right? Am I reading this right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so my she, God. Kathy, Kathy Bates' Oscar winner is playing essentially a new take on Matlock. It's on CBS, Charlie. What could even be better than this? Bo Bridges, Bro Bridges and Jason Ritter in this. I am all in. My wife looked at this like, hey, why not? And I'm oh, like, my God. Kathy, Kathy Bates is amazing. And why not? This might be your last series. She's like 78. Could be. Uh, I scrolled down quite a bit. We saw a trailer for this uh, in the theater. Uh, Ryan Murphy's new project is called Grotesque. Yeah, this one's weird. Yeah. D- d- grotesquery. Grotesquery. Uh, Nisi Nash, uh, Courtney B. Vance, and Travis Kelsey? What? Of course. Of course, sure. Uh, well, then, obviously, there will be a sweeps episode with uh, Taylor. Um, but yeah, ghost, she was in fun ghost fact. Ghost. Niecy Nash was one of the characters from a show you don't care about, Scream Queens. She oh, played basically yeah. a yeah. cop in that. Yeah. And then it's funny that Ryan Murphy has brought her back. It's basically she's brought in to investigate a yeah. murder where there's been like some like uh, uh, like nuns that go wrong. There we go. And Travis Kelsey. Oh, my gosh. I'm continuing to scroll, so feel free to jump in. Sure. Uh, Uh, I got one, Charlie. Dr. Odyssey. This one's going to be fun. Ryan Murphy, once again, is back, and he's doing basically Death on the High Seas, like Love Boat, but Joshua Jackson is a doctor. He's he's playing Doc on the Love Boat, but he actually, with imagine Doc had to actually treat patients. Oh, my gosh. I'm into it on ABC. I scrolled way down. This will grab <clears throat> April's attention, but an animated Tomb Raider, The Legend of Laura Croft, starring Haley Atwell as Laura Croft on yeah. uh, Netflix on October 10. Um, so I have one. Uh, it's called The Franchise on HBO. Okay. This one okay. looks very, very fun. It's basically 
a recreation of people that are having to make a superhero franchise oh, is boy. behind the scenes. Basically, you've got like the producers, the filmmakers, and this one looks a lot of fun. It's going to be on HBO slash Max on right. October 6th. And you've got really cool uh, people involved in regards to uh, basically the filmmaker that's going to make this thing about spandex and capes. We've got uh, Hamish Patel, uh, Aya Cash, Jessica Hines, Billy Magnuson, and Sam yeah. Mendes is directing this. And it's also got the guy who played, um, oh, the guy from the MCU who is playing Baron. Uh, oh, uh, Daniel Bruhl. Dar- Baron yes, Zemo? he is yeah, the yeah. director of this 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 series, this franchise. This series. So this could be a lot of fun, like fun talking about all those things. Uh, basically, when we talk about making a cinematic uh, cinematic universe, then we got Teacup. This is going to be okay. yeah, James Wan yeah. from Saw uh, is going to make this uh, series on Peacock that looks interesting with Yvonne Strahovski, Scott oh, uh, Speedman, yeah. Chesky Spencer, and Kathy Very Baker. Nice. This is going to be a series that yeah. is going to be part of Spooky Season. But yes, Tomb Raider looks really cool on Netflix. Yep. I got a can't miss for you, Tad. A prequel for NCIS. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, narrated by Mark Harmon about the younger days of his character. NCIS will yes. never die. It will never. Oh, this is one that comes on next month. That because we've uh, Young yes. Sheldon. I told you we enjoyed the first half. The back half of it is really insufferable, and we've not seen the last season. But they're spinning off the older brother character who had a baby uh, with uh, the uh, with an actress who's the sister of Haley Joel Osment, uh, and so it'll be sitcom and potentially very forgettable but we'll check it out um, why is it called first marriage is it because we know that they are getting divorced uh i mean you know what I, it's funny because we're watching big bang right now and georgie who's the older brother shows up as an adult and it's um i was on stage with him in chicago it's uh jerry o'connell and ah. my thought, maybe uh, they get divorced and remarried. I have no idea. Maybe that was established in the, we haven't gotten to that episode yet. So okay, interesting. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, they, well, I've got, I've got a series for you that should be a lot of fun. It's called Hysteria. It's on Peacock. Okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's Julie Bowen, Anna Camp, uh, MJ Anthony, and it's also going to have Bruce Campbell in this. And oh this yay! Basically, uh, it's it's basically a set in the '80s, and it follows a high school metal band who capitalizes on the fear by adding a devilish facade to their style using a string of murders and supernatural activity uh, which turns the community against them. This looks like a lot of fun. I saw the trailer for it. Julie Bowen's doing great. It's October 18th. Bruce Campbell's involved. I'm yeah. all in. Gotcha. I'm scrolling, but nothing is. Oh, I do see Ted Danson's back in the show. Yes. Uh, and there's a good news about that. Charlie is the fact that who's doing the show with him. It did it be, because he's available. They brought in the guy who played Jason. <laughs> uh, no, it's going to be it's a good place reunion. So Mike oh, Schur is go. creating his new show. It's called The Man on the Inside. Yep. Stars Tan Danson on Netflix, and it's basically about a comedic take on the Oscar nominated documentary The Mole Agent, which follows an older man Danson who's hired by a private detective to be a mole in a nursing home. Mole, so that should be mole, fun. Mole. Oh, cool. uh, and I'll hit on a couple that you might have missed, okay. um, and okay. we'll go from here. Right. Uh, so if we go to this one. This one's going to be interesting. It's called Like a Dragon. This is based on a video game series, Yakuza. It's kind of a cool hit look at a video game series based on the Japanese mafia, which yeah. could be fun. Yeah. But the one that stands out for me is really interesting. It's called Before on Apple TV+. Plus. This is um, a description. It's Before includes the words atmospheric, psychological thriller, and supernatural mystery. And surprisingly, Billy Crystal stars in this. It's a comedian appears to be going out of his comfort zone by playing a child psychologist who works with a young boy who has an unusual connection to his past. Judith Light also appears. What? Yeah. This Look looks the, really good. All these oldsters having these big old career renaissances. Renaissances. Re, re, good for yep. them. Another one is Day of the Jackal. This is an old okay. film okay. that's been redone before. And we've get um, Eddie Redmayne as the lone assassin in this oh, uh, series it, on Peacock. Eddie Redmayne, the Harry Potter guy you can't stand? Uh, yes, he's the weirdo. He's been a lot of things. He's yeah. an odd boy. Uh, I don't love him, but he's a good actor. And, it's, and another one that I am interested in, Charlie, is called St. Dennis Medical. Yes. It's basically uh, a similar to Abbott Elementary, but it's set into a hospital. It's going to be a kind of a mockumentary Single with David case. Allen Single Greer, Single Wendy camera. McLevin, Con- Covey, oh, Coleman, nice. Josh okay. Lawson. So this will be a new comedy on NBC 
that I think could be a lot of fun. So we're always good looking for, for the next comedy. Right. Should be good. Anything, uh, that, anything to keep the networks alive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and so that's kind of it for the right. fall with tv obviously i could tell you all about the the cooking the baking all those shows that i love about the halloween session but charlie won't let me so we'll let's move on to it's, comics it's on our short list of banned topics which we yes. i can't name any more perfectly fine. because they're banned all right yes, comics uh we got just some covers here um you know I, like i said i'm reading new comics now here and there but my, my tastes are pretty specific but looks like we have uh and again i have no data so i'm just looking at these covers we have a new I series. just had to grab stuff as much as I could. That is, I'm not complaining. We have uh, we have a series about the uh, X Men character Psylocke, uh, immortalized by Olivia Munn <laughs> in the Apocalypse yes. movie. Uh, a new series for Moon Knight, Fist of Kanchu. Uh, Ka- now, it Ka- the next one, Conquest, is that a video game adaptation? But it's set in no, 20- no. That's okay. Conquest is playing off the old. Uh, this is like the galactic version of marvel tied okay. into the 2099 universe so you get yes. to see like nova and different characters there okay. tied okay. into 2099 with spider-man so i don't know what it is but it's a new series coming tomorrow uh, i'm signed up uh for this one my fear is that it's going to follow the same format of a different uh limited series set in the star wars universe which was chewbacca where it was only him speaking in Shirawook, so you never knew what he was saying. But this one is Ewoks. And I love this cover because this is a direct adaptation of one of the covers of the old Marvel series from the 70s and 80s. The exa- it's just an Ewok with his big Ewok foot on top of a Stormtrooper helmet and uh, holding his Ewok spear. Uh, so that looks fun. I signed up for it. Every once in a while, I'm successful forcing April to read a comic. And because it's about the Ewoks, I think I will be successful with this one. So I hope great. there's a lot of eating of flesh by the Ewoks. I think maybe it could be just that. So, all right. So that's Mar- that's Marvel. What do we got over in DC Comics? So DC, we're getting some like uh, Halloween era type of uh, comics. We've got yeah, DC yeah. Horror Presents number one. This Ouch. is coming out October 23rd. Bon- bones crunching, worms munching, blood spattering. Basically, people are taking uh, the, Mar- the DC characters and putting them into horrific elements. We've got Justice League Unlimited number one by Mark Wade, one of my favorite oh, yes. writers. Oh, yes. Dan Mora is writing that, so that's coming out in October as well. And then I love this one, Batman Santa Claus, Silent Night. We finally get the team up of Batman and Superman defending the toys for the little boys and girls. So I cannot wait for that. Fantastic. That is coming out in November 26. Yeah. So very fun. And then Charlie, G.I. Joe's coming. Yes. The new I series. Had that pre-ordered uh, for a very long time. There have uh, there will now be, when it's completed, four different miniseries. We've talked about them over on our Patreon. So if you're not a member, it's a great time to go over there and listen to us talk about Duke, uh, followed up by Cobra Commander, then Scarlet and Destro, combining into a team where they've done a little flippity-flop. If you're looking at this cover image, you see a lot of very familiar characters. You do see one new character who just appears to... He looks like a cross between... Buying a F- suit. Yeah, FBI agent, a Texas Ranger, and he's got a big old shotgun. Uh, but what the the script flip here is that the Baroness is now a member of the GI Joe team. It appears that Scarlet is a member of the Cobra Ooh, team. Flippy floppy. Yeah, flippity flip flop. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I've kind of fallen off the wagon with the Larry Hama continuation series because yeah. it just didn't grab me, which I feel bad about because I've met. Larry Wait, you Hama. haven't yeah. caught up on all 300 and a billion no, episodes of that I, issues because I skipped the uh, 150. Uh, 45 issues in between this and that uh, uh, and they're very hard to find i just decided to give up and start fresh that's a um, smart move Charlie. yeah yes. time, and time, time and money time and money and money yeah money. exactly all right well what is hornsby and halo from image comics what's that all about yeah so this is a one-off uh or maybe it's going to be ongoing it's called hornsby and halo it's good versus evil from the Peter, uh from the minds of peter j tomasi and peter Snyberg. great creators Keeping the cosmic peace isn't easy, but the opposing leaders of Heaven Hell broker a deal that trades Zachary Halo, an angel child, to a demon family and Rose Hornsby, a demon child, to an angelic family to hope this truce will halt the winds of war. That's kind of fun. The winds of war, my least favorite kind of winds. Uh, yes. Well, good. And then, of course, all of your regular ongoing comics that yes. you would expect will be out there. So, yeah, that's it. That's the fall. Uh, and yeah, would, uh, 
I, I'm, I'm trying to remember if we also do a winter preview. We usually do a, tw- uh, a New Year's preview. That'll be our next. Yeah, uh, anything coming Friday. out basically January to yeah, March. Exactly. Yes. So that's what we catch next time. But that's the show. Uh, so, yeah, good times are ahead. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Todd, where do people find you out there? They find me on the threads at Tioxtra at Seek Friends Unite. Uh, it's a good time there. So check me out and all the things we're talking about there. Very good. Same here. I am on threads and Instagram uh, at the C3, T-H-E-C-E-E-T-H-R-E-E. I'm not hard to find, I promise. Uh, Spent a heck of a lot of time uh, over at our Secret Friends Unite Discord because that's where we're having all the fun conversations. April and I do also run a fun little group, just a Discord, uh, for Trekkers in Michigan. Doesn't really matter where you are. We just had to name it something, but we do love talking about Star Trek, and we'd love to have you there as well. So hit us up. With that, I will bid all of us adieu. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring, and keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. And a truck. One ring to rule them all, unless it's a Jocelyn ring. And then you to rule them all. Turn your finger green. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member. Get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.